first night here. Uh, we're just settling in, making dinner, and uh, for drinks tonight, Sally's having a, uh, what is it? Bud Light Apple. Bud Light Apple. And I'm going to try this, uh, it's a German beer, because I've been listening to uh, Six Gum Productions, um, that podcast, uh, GNR, Geek News Radio, and uh, this is something that I heard uh, Fab drinking, so i got to try these uh, this pop top here and see how that is. And then for dinner, we're grilling up some pork chops on the RVQ. A couple of pork chops, salad, and uh, maybe some uh, cheese sticks. That'll make for a good dinner. Okay, so we just went for a little walk down to the beach here, and uh, it kind of brings back memories of when we were here before. And uh, they do rent canoes and uh, paddle boats and whatnot here, but the last time we were here, they were so busy that we weren't able to get a canoe before they were out. So, just making a little note to myself here. So the next time we come up here, if we do want to go canoeing in the water, which we're not doing this weekend just because of the high winds, but if we did want to go canoeing in the water, we'll bring our own canoe. So this morning we're going to go for our uh, traditional hike, which we always do when we go camping. This is a map of all the um, campgrounds at Balsam Lake Provincial Park. It's a very large park compared to uh, many in the area. And we're located right here at Site 260. And this morning we're going to hike the trails, which means we're going to have to leave the campsite, probably walk along this road here up to the circle and up this road here and this little uh, inset here shows here's all our uh, campgrounds down here and this is where all the trails are up here so I'm gonna flip open to the uh, trails section and what we're probably gonna do this morning is we're gonna walk to the end here we're gonna go along uh, this is called Lori's Link and then Lori's Link joins on with um, the Lookout Trail, but we'll probably just go down here, come along here, and then, then we're done. And that's what we're going to do today. Sounds good. All right, let's go. Okay, so we took the side of the road here to get up to the head of uh, Lori's Trail, or uh, Lori's Link, it's called. Um, these trails do connect. It doesn't show it on the map, but I see now that across the road it does connect onto the plantation loop. 
So we're gonna just go down this trail as we planned this morning and uh, see what it's like. And then tomorrow morning we'll do something different. Okay, so here you go. This is not a bad trail, eh? It's all right, yeah. It doesn't look like very many people have uh, walked on this trail because there's a lot of growth yeah. um, well, underfoot here. And if you look at the ground here, there's uh, you can tell that this trail hasn't really been walked on a whole lot, at least over the past little bit. So. But it is well maintained. At this point, the uh, trail has opened up into a nice, uh, bright opening here. Again, it doesn't look like a very uh, heavily traveled trail, uh, but it is uh, well maintained. What do you think, Sally? Yeah, it's pretty. Is that, darling? So this is the nicest part of the trail so far. Yeah, it's really nice through here. Right? There's a lot of pines. And they're tall. They're tall. I think a lot of these pines are planted here for harvest. It smells really healthy. Yeah, the air's really clean this morning. It's cool, eh? It's, what is it, about 10 degrees? Do you think? Uh, yeah. eight, 8 degrees, 10 eight degrees? Eight degrees. This is like the start of fall. As far as I'm concerned, it's the best time of year to go camping. It was, it was a little windy last night. We blew our awning down a couple of times, but it's not a big deal. We just go out and put it back up. Yeah. It's kind of nice to go along these lesser travel trails in some of these parks. See more of the wildlife, although the wildlife's been kind of quiet so far today, huh? Well, yesterday we saw a couple of big frogs. Yep, there were the frogs. But well, that was pretty late. Yeah. Not seeing a whole lot out here today. No. I wonder where that is. It's too cold. They're still in bed. I don't know if it even said. It might have said on the light. Yeah. But yeah, this isn't the kind of trail. It's not you, an easy trail. No, you want to wear sturdy footwear on uh, on this trail for sure. There's all the rocks and branches. The rocks and branches. And the steep hills. Yeah. Well, it's nice though. Again, and we come up, come up to the top of this hill. It's kind of open, and uh, we did hear some red squirrels back in the woods there. So the red squirrel, I believe, is a fairly common squirrel throughout this part of the country, throughout uh, southern and mid Ontario. They're definitely not an endangered species. Well, the skies are pretty blue. I'm gonna have to take off my sweater suit. So we're getting full sunshine today. That's perfect, right? If we uh, had a non-powered site, making lots of power from our solar panel on a day like today, but uh, we went in, we opted for the electric site. Actually, it'd be a good day to canoe, wouldn't it? 
right now would be, yeah. Yeah. Only go to the lake to see the people can go, right? Yeah. Yeah, we felt yesterday it was a little too windy oh, yeah. to bring the, the canoe. Up, right? Even on the drive up, there was a lot of crosswinds in that. I just kind of felt like, you know what, just for the weekend, I didn't really want to bother with it too much. Plus, we're having guests over today, so that really closes the window of opportunity for us to get out on the water. Which is okay. Which is okay. Oh my god. Yeah. But next time, next time we come here, we'll bring in our community. Oh, yeah. Sure. It's a good part of the country. Right? 100%. Some of the sites here are private. Yeah. Just the one that we're at. Yeah. And people are pretty quiet. Time of year, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, these hills are pretty steep. A lot of ups and downs, but yeah. it really makes for an interesting hike. It's good to bring layers because sometimes you might have to take off this water. Yeah. I had to put it back on. Oh, we're coming up on a bench. That's kind of neat. That's the first bench you can see. This must be a luck out. Yeah. So there's our there's our bench right behind wow. me here. Let's get warm again. Here's the view. Need to rest or? No, I'm good. Alright. My ears are fogging up a little bit. Better. Another uh, <laughs> checkpoint here. Put some directions here. Uh, Lori's Link Trail is uh, what we just came off of. And we're going to carry on down the Lookout uh, Trail. So they provided a map for us here. We're here. So we came down here and through here. And that was quite nice. We're here. We're going to go down through here like we discussed this morning. I'm just going to read this real quick here. It's uh, the lookout point, uh, interest point number seven. You are standing on a 50 meter hike, Came, the tallest hill in the park's Came complex. Take a moment to soak in the view from this vantage point. To the immediate west, you can see an open grassland, and beyond that, extensive pine and spruce plantations. To the south, you may see a small portion of Balsam Lake. If you decide to hike Lori's Link from this point onward, you will continue over several smaller came hills. About 20% of the park is made up of this glacial landform. Cames are another legacy of the last ice age. These low, relatively steep sided hills are found as isolated mounds or sometimes in clusters as they are here at Balsam Lake Provincial Park. They form in the chaotic zone of melting ice, water, and oozing sediment close to the ice margin. Virtually any hollow within the melting front may fill with water and receive sediment. As the ice melts, the cane begins to emerge as a huge pile of water sorted sediments from sand in the middle of the pile to larger stones on the outside. The effect is similar to the conical piles at gravel pits. 
Over thousands of years, the steep sides of the cane are gradually softened by erosion. Watch for wildflowers as you hike. The canes are often covered with wildflowers throughout the summer months. So there's a picture of the cane. All right, so we're gonna take off another layer and uh, carry on. What views? Even at this late time of the year, start of fall, we still have some nice uh, flowers here to look at and enjoy. Back in the woods again. And, uh, it's kind of interesting this time of year. You definitely want to wear a flare gone from hot, we're back in the cold again. Well, cool. Cool. This is the uh, leaves of three, let it be. So, we're talking about poison ivy here, and there's a whole bunch of poison ivy back there. But yeah, we're wearing pants, and Sally's got her pants tucked into her socks, so, yeah, the ivy is mostly on the ground here. In this time of year, I don't think it's as toxic. It's late in the year, so. Well, with my luck, it's toxic. Oh, yeah, it probably might still have some toxicity. I'm not too worried about it, though. I don't think anyone's ever died from poison ivy that I know of. That's annoying. So are kids. I'd rather have poison ivy than. Well, I don't know. I guess kids can be okay too sometimes. <laughs> we got one of our own, so. I guess we were all kids at one time, huh? No comment? No comment. No comment. Boy, a lot of rocks through here, eh? Oh, yeah. Watch your step. Yeah, you gotta watch your step. Yeah. Oh, wait. And it seems like camouflage. Yeah. Some of these rocks come right up. I don't know if you can see that. This is like a very interesting part of the ground. Yeah. Well, and there's our red squirrel, which are very common in this part of the world, as I mentioned. Where did somebody go? Poison ivy and red squirrels. Two things you're gonna find in these provincial parks. And frogs. Toads, frogs, mosquitoes. But there's no mosquitoes out here today. I think when the temperature drops below a certain point, you get a certain amount of wind. You just don't have any mosquitoes to deal with anymore. I think I think it might be more common down here when it's warmer. And no hornets yet either, though, eh? I'm surprised. We have a lot back home, though. Yeah. We're not far from here, though. Now we're walking along a part of the trail where it's not so obvious that it's a trail. Um, I, I can tell you certainly right now that we're on the right trail because I can see another uh, checkpoint up ahead. Uh, but just be aware that if you're not very good at orienteering, you might want to brush up on uh, your skills before doing this trail. Because you could get turned around and get heading in the wrong direction in these woods. Yeah. And uh, it's a pretty big park. area. And it's a pretty big park. Mm -hmm. so we are coming up along another checkpoint and have these uh, little signs here along the trail that tell you a little bit about the area like the last one we were at told us how uh, 
this forest was opened up with, uh, with wind storms. And then another point, it was uh, called Mother Nature's Garden. So this one here, this is how you know you're on the trail. Let's treat the earth well, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, if you can turn around, just, just look for these. If you have a GPS app on your phone, use that to keep track of where you are and where you were. And maybe keep track of where these things are and they kind of help you. If you look around, and if you look behind me, the, the trail's pretty obvious here. But then as it disappears into there up ahead, you know, you can just turn around. I can hear cracking sounds like it's Could just be the wind too, knocking off dead branches. That's another thing I think people should be made aware of when you're walking through these trails and that. They're called widow makers, and that's a tree branch that's died up high. And then a gust of wind will uh, blow the tree and knock it down if it hits you in the head it can do some serious damage actually this trail here is pretty good yeah this, is pretty wide here, yeah, this, this part here is pretty obvious but Some parts there are parts there where you kind of scratch your head and fortunately they uh, make this make it pretty clear though with those markers if you just find those markers back on the trail also look for the little blue arrows the little white signs with the blue arrow you look for those on the trees and they kind of show you the direction which you want to walk. I'll look, we're up along another bench here. So this is called the... Oh, uh, this is the end of it, isn't it? There's signs for the campsites here now. Or, okay, know. so yeah, they have a thing here called eco campsites. And I believe those are campsites that you would uh, maybe hike into. Um, and there's the also campers. the Hawthorne Valley Campground. And uh look at the trail. Well it's yeah, this this trail's a loop, right? Oh, okay. so, back now. so what's this down is, here then? I don't know. I think we should go find it. But this is a this is a loop. The Buckout Trail so loop. Trying, we came down on, on the on the lower part of this. I'm just wondering what's down here though, right? Well, I think we should go down and find it. I think we have time. We got lots of time. The right trail, that is the right part of the trail. Um, I guess we walk this trail backwards as we normally do. And uh, <laughs> so we're just walking it now back out to the main road. I guess normally you could start here and then walk around the loop. Um, we'll go over that tomorrow morning. I think I'll. Uh, Decide what we're going to do tomorrow morning. Yeah, and it does link onto this trail. It didn't show it on that map, but it actually does link onto here. So. That's a good trail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can mix it up, do it whatever way you want. Plenty of room. To the majestic white ash tree. Yeah. So we're getting near the end here. So what it is, is there's a parking lot over there where you can park. We walked up from our campsite because we wanted more of a walk, but if you don't feel like walking along the road, you just want to walk on the trail, you can park your car here and stay on the trail where it's obviously safer than walking along a road. Um, but we're daredevils. Yeah. And you can see here they got a nice carving of the trails. And I think this is more up to date than what's in that paper guide. I'm going to take a picture of this after, but... It definitely does show that when you come up to here, what we saw that these trails interconnect. So yeah, I think this is more up to date than, uh, than what they have. I'm gonna take a snapshot of that and then post a link to that. So that's it for our morning hike. I'm gonna go back to our campsite. I'm here this morning with Sally at Balsam Lake Provincial Park on the last day of our trip here. And uh, this morning we're going to do the uh, plantation trail. Look at this beautiful wood carved map. Isn't that something? This map is, uh, somebody's gone and, and carved it and colored it in. And uh, just to show you what we're going to do this morning, we're going to, we're down here right now in the, in the parking lot. We're just going to come out along this trail. We're going to do the big loop this morning. We're going to come around here, up around here, 
so there's seven there, and then we'll go eight. We're going to do this the right way around this time. We're not walking the trail backwards like we normally do. We're going to come down here, and then, uh, boom, there's nine. And uh, that's what we're doing this morning. Nine we're going to come back number. here. And then that's it. So that's where the trail comes in there, and then where we're going to go is this way. So with no further ado, let's go. Let's go. No. So this trail doesn't look like Actually, it's. Actually, It's not as well um, traveled as the other one. It's like the other one where there's like enough moss and plants growing on the uh, trail. But I'd say it's not a heavily used trail either. But it is maintained. Sally's volunteered to walk on ahead so that she'll attract the black bears for me. Beat them up for me. This is another one of those trails where it could be easy to take the wrong turn. But they do have these posts here. So, and they, uh, yeah, so here's an example here of what I was talking about earlier. at this point and just look for these blue arrows and they'll send you straight in the right direction. There's another one. Just uh, watch your... I almost tripped. I see that. There's another blue arrow, again because it would be real easy to get heading in the wrong direction in these woods, and then you'd be lost. Um, it's a good idea too to keep an idea of where the sun is, because the sun will give you a sense of uh, direction. The sun will be in the east right now. This time of the year, it's kind of in the south. It shouldn't be too far south though, it's only September. This part of the trail kind of opens up. It looks like that they're actively uh, participating in uh, forestry management out here. I see uh, some of these trees, these smaller trees, are like uh, wrapped, like, like back there. Someone's wrapped that. And they put wire cages around some of them too to prevent uh, small animals from uh, like rabbits and whatnot from chewing at the bark and destroying these this trees. Be doing, uh, yeah, we should be. Maybe we won't when we get back. But they're obviously uh, managing and maintaining these trails, which is nice to see. Yeah, money built too. Preserving this sort of habitat for future generations to enjoy. Okay, 
Oh, let's carry on. Getting warm out, eh? Starting to get a few mosquitoes, too. Not many. I've had a couple that I swatted. Oh. There's another one up in this tree. Good morning, Mr. Red Squirrel. Oh, we're walking into the sun. We come around to the other side. We're starting on our trek back, and the uh, forest has opened up again to this uh, opening here. It's very pretty. There's a lot more sounds here. It's also warmer here, being in the direct sun. And all kinds of insects. And amphibians singing their songs. I think we're just past the halfway point. Here we're at point number nine. This point nine. There's number nine there. Maybe. Let's see, all right? Oh wow, we did that pretty quick. Yeah, it's very pretty up here. You can see the what, grass, eh? But there's long grass, so we do uh, think that anyone wearing turns to wear pants. Also looks like there's a uh, air poop. Oh my god. I think there's bear poop on the, on the trail. Are you serious? Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Well, there's some bear here. I believe it. Is that that? Because I think it's a problem. Uh, I'm not an expert in the freshness of poop, so. Oh, that's not good. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Oh, 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 they don't like us, I don't think. They just want our food and garbage. Well, somebody says never to bring food with food. Like, yeah. I don't see anything, but I can see how they'd be out here. They would probably prefer being uh, out in the open field. But I thought you were an expert in analyzing the pieces. No. No, just... Uh, just picking things out of my own feces that I might have swallowed. Yeah, so, that does look different though. It's like, it's like yeah, you can tell bear poop because it's full of sticks, and twigs, and stuff. I've never seen that before. That's so good. They eat just about they eat just about anything and everything. Um, but yeah, we're back heading back into the uh, woods now. Well, nine was one of the last ones. It's definitely further along than one, so two, that or three. I think that was more likely to be a raccoon. You had a big bear country. It did. black bear country. But black bears aren't really the kind of bear I would worry about too much. No? No. I think I'd worry more about uh, brown bears, grizzly bears. Are so they more up in uh, Nova? I think so. Definitely a very pretty walk. It is, yeah. I do feel good with the bugs, though. Yeah. But they're starting up. Hopefully, we'll be done this trail before there's too more, many more of them. We only saw one other couple walking this right? Yeah, walking their dog. No one we knew. Okay, and we're coming up to uh, another sign here. This is Plantation Trailhead. I don't think we're quite there yet. Oh, this must be... Uh, I'm thinking that this is where that lower plantation trail comes from up there. If we'd done the shorter loop, and then this is where it would come out. Okay. We took the long way. We took the long trail, yeah. And I forgot to record it on my GPS app, so I do apologize for that. But eh, whatever. I'll give you your money back. Here. Okay, so it looks like we're coming back out to the uh, end of the trail. So that wasn't too bad. No. 
I don't think this trail was as interesting as the one we did yesterday. No, the one yesterday was better. Um, but it's still certainly a pretty trail and I think worthwhile doing if you're here. Definitely enough variation in the trails that I think a person could spend more than a couple days up here oh, yeah. and, uh, and enjoy what all these trails have to offer. Alright, let's go back. Our trip to uh, Balsam Lake Provincial Park. I think it's a great little getaway, not too far from the city. It takes us about an hour and 20 minutes or so to drive up here, so perfect for a weekend trip. Although I believe that there's enough things here to keep you busy for a week if you wanted to, or even longer. Uh, lots of variations in the trails, lots of things to do with the swimming in the water. There's playgrounds here for the kids. Lots of power sites here for RVs, and it's a big enough park that I think uh, tenters who want a radio-free experience are going to find what they're looking for. Um, I would easily give this a 4.5 out of 5. What do you say, Nick? Yeah, about 4.5. What do you say, Sally? Ditto. All right. And we got the bumper sticker. Ha, 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 ha. All right. Thanks for watching. Let's go home.